Hello and welcome to your first how to make your own clip-on bow tie video. Now these are three video, I mean three bow ties that I made, um, all three different shapes, sizes, and materials. This one is a silk satin blend. This one is a smaller one and it's just a, a silk satin polyester blend. And this one is a cotton polyester blend. You can also make thicker material bow ties as well. And I'm going to show you how to make a bow tie along with the pocket square. Now the pocket squares are usually 10 by 10. I hem the edges or if you don't want to hem the edges or have a serger, you can just cut the edges with pinking shears. Right here. That stops it from raveling and having all those loose strings after a while. Or like I said, you can hem it with your serger. You can always also do a rolled hem stitch any which way that makes you feel comfortable. <clears throat> now, let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is get our material. And I'm going to make two bow ties at a time. This one is red. This is just red satin bridal satin and we're going to use the inside of it of course not the silky side the side that you want your bow tie to be on that's the side you put down and you need two pieces I use two pieces to make my bow tie bow ties uh, you can use them with one piece of course there's a lot of variations that you can use I have this ruler I usually cut about 10 inches by four, gives me a little bit over four, gives me excess material. So if I need to cut in, if I made it too big, too small, I have room to make some adjustments and I could cut it off in the end. All right, so we're gonna do this one. Put this here. And then I've got this olive green here that I like. I'm not sure the material, but it's nice and silky. It's got a little pattern in it. I think it'll make a nice bow tie. On this one, both sides are basically silky. So it's just a matter of which side you want to use. And this one looks a little less silkier than this one. So I'm going to use this side. All right, so after you cut your materials out, I have another video that shows you how to prep and get everything cut out. In this video, we're just gonna work on how to make the bow tie. All right, now, um, what we're gonna do next is I like to layer my stiffness. It depends on the type of material and how stiff I want it. So in order to control the stiffness, I use starch first. I got a heavy duty starch. Uh, I used to use liquid starch whatever one, whichever one you like, <clears throat> different variations of stiffness. It's also an option. Everything I use is not set in stone. You could always find alternatives for it to get the desired effect. And then after I do that, I have some interfacing here. I cut them already and measured them in my prep video. This is the size I want my bow ties to be. I usually do them like about a little between two and a half and two inches. This is my standard bow tie and a little over four and a half inches. The, this one right here is a special order and that one is about five, five and a half inches by almost three. So it depends on your style. So we're gonna take one of these and put it on this side. You can use a, a sticky or non-stick interfacing. Um, this one is not as stiff, but I do have some other stiff interfacings that I use for more stiff bow ties. And then, <clears throat> we're gonna use an iron. Most of this process is ironing. Um, that's how you get your Christmas and your precision. And then some, like I said, you do have options 
to sew and I have another video on how to sew a different style bow tie and we'll go over that on another video. Alright, so let's get this one going and the next thing we're going to do is now iron them down. Again, we're going to turn it up a little bit. I had to turn it down until we were ready. The highest that your um, material could take the heat, the better. Doesn't take a long time to make the ties. That's why I'm doing like two at a time. They're fairly simple. And just create yourself an assembly line if you're making a few for a wedding. or any other special event. Just take your time and let it iron down. Now we got that in there. And now we have a fairly stiff, see I have a semi-sticky interfacing I didn't want it too sticky because I need it to be pliable to do something else, but it's fairly sticky on there. And we got that there. Here we go. Alright, so now, now that we got that taken care of, the next thing that we're going to do is fold it around here. Because again, this is your bow tie right here. This is your desired bow tie. And so all you're doing is forming the material around it and making it crisp with your iron. I'm pushing it up towards the edges of course to try to get it as close to the material as possible. Again, the thicker the material, the longer you have to hold the iron on there to get the creases that you need for it. And then you do the other side the same way. <clears throat> and on the edges, you can always iron them in because they're going to fold in, which I'll show you in a little while. It's warm, so I like to let it sit on the bottom. And repeat it, same thing, pull it over, get it nice and crisp. This one, see how that one flattened out a little bit better, the material is a little bit more pliable. This bridal satin <clears throat> is a little more stiff, so it takes a little bit more to lay it down. It seems like it will be the easier type, but all right. Now we finished our first section. See our bow ties come into, into, into play. All right, now our next step, we've got that done on both sides. We're gonna repeat the same process. Folding a material around the interfacing that we've already pre-cut for the bow tie that we want and the size that we want. go that's one and then again like I said my bow ties I put two one on the front one on the back uh, I have another bow tie video that'll show you how to make singles so there's different variations but this is my uh, most favorite and highest seller and then while it's hot what I like to do is to show you how to do my crimping process I was trying to try it that way but that's not gonna work let's try it this way first I hold my thumb here this two here and pull these back and I do this while it's warm because it helps to form it and makes it easier in the other process so there I go there's my bow tie get it ready get it centered and it'll basically stay like this when it cools and we'll finish the part and put all the rest of the materials in do all the specifics but that's it right there and if you don't get this process right 
the rest of the process is not going to come out right. All right, so let's finish this one. Same thing here, fold it, fold it, and you see I got a little excess. Like I said, it's about 10 and 10. Depends if you're making a really big bow tie, of course, you need a little bit more than uh, 10 by 4 inches on your original cut. nice I like that <clears throat> this one yeah I could see I'm gonna need to bring this in a little bit because when I fold it later it might stick out because after you get your final project and you put the bow tie clip in it's too late to make any adjustments for the majority you have to do it all now All right, now you see how some of this is sticking out a little bit on the edge. That's what I was folding them in for. So you can fold them in. You can also use um, stitch witchery. This is some <clears throat> non-stick, double stick iron on. And you could put this on here, cut a little piece Sometime I do this to make it easier, or I do the iron and end part. And then this will help you to be able to position it in here, where when you fold it in, it won't stick out on the edges. Let that cool down. I could do one on the other end just to be safe. Mm. That should be enough. Peels right up and off, and you got your little double stick adhesive right there, and you can put this in exactly where you want it to stay, and that is where it will stay. Mm -mm. I put this on this side, so it doesn't matter which side. This one's still a little warm, but it came off. All right. There you go. Okay. Makes it a little bit easier to get that where you want it. And see, pulled it right in there. My finished product will be nice and crisp. Won't be any stragglers. Everything I use is water resistant. So when you wash your bow tie, some people do wash them, they have them so long, they are washable. Everything in here is water resistant and it will not fall apart in the washing machine. <coughs> and again, you see <coughs> your edge there. You can neaten that up with some pinking shears or just cut it over, whichever one you like. They're not gonna see this part and that's why I have the two pieces because these are two outside and they go face to face inside each other and you don't see this craftsmanship. that one see it's stuck on there it's not coming out and I'll show you when I mend it together let's clean these edges up a little bit those little strings right there they'll come out here and there if you don't get them now in the long run you want your bow tie to last 
And those are little ways to make it last. So let's go ahead and put some more stitch witchery in here. Do the same for this one. And again, you can assembly line it if you want. Because I'm going to do the same for the other two as well. There's also an option to um, make the material longer, one of them longer, and let one overlap the other one. And that will also give you a nice little cover. Iron that one, iron let that cool. Let's go ahead and do these. This one looks like it's sticking down a little bit pretty good by itself. Yeah, this one has overlap and it was laying down really nice from the iron so I don't really have to mess with that too much now when I put it in you'll see that one didn't look like it need too much work mm, you don't want it too bulky in the middle because it's a lot of stuff that has to go on in the middle go ahead and cut this even that's why I like it even because it doesn't overlap but still pretty this one looks like it might stay together pretty well if not we can always make the adjustments so we're going to wind up leaving them even 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 These are ready. Okay, there you go. Same thing. Put it, position it where you want it to stay. And it's okay if it buckles up in the middle. Again, we're not going to see that part. And I need that extra to put my bow tie clip material in. You will see soon. back together now that we did some work to them. I'm applying a little pressure because <clears throat> I want them crisp. My finished product. isn't as slippery as the other one, so I'm a little bit more careful on that one. Okay. Cool enough for the touch, but not too cool where I can't crimp it. All right, so now <clears throat> we have, basically, this is our bow tie. When we're done with the ironing part, now we're going to do with the sewing and the cutting finishing off the product and this is how I squeeze my tie again pushing it in moving my thumb and there it's just nice and crisp it's gonna stay crisp when they fold and open it see the back <laughs> that's it 
I'm going to put the clips in on there just like you can see and this is the beginning of the finishing product so again now that it's cooling off it's going to basically stay in that form so when I get to the other part I don't have to do much work in the form my thumb right here again two fingers back here I'm pushing this down and then I'm going to push this in and you see it doesn't always fold right so while you're holding it you got to get it where it wants to go again while it's warm and you shouldn't have any problems in the future. Now, if this part doesn't come out right or you can't fix it, that means that some part of your cutting was off. <clears throat> you should be fairly even. These never come out exactly the same, and that's not a big deal. And there you go. You can move it over. This is where you center it and do all your work. So. That's the first part. First half completed. Now we're done with the ironing process for the most part. Now, actually, while we still have the iron warm, <clears throat> we could take the other parts that we're going to need and iron these, and then we could be done with the iron completely. So this is the middle part. This little part you put in here. And you can do different things with it. You can just do a basic band. Here, I have a basic band here, just front and back. You can, you can hardly see this. It's like a double little fold there. And I think I did it here as well. Yep, this one. So that's like one of my favorites. All right, so I'll do one of each. One. Basically, and again, you don't have to iron it if you want to. You can just hold it like that, put it around there, but for precision, it's better to iron it so you have more control over the material while you're trying to sew it. This one, we're just going to do, like I said, a basic band. You don't need any interfacing. There you go, just that. And we may need to make it smaller, depends on how much room we have in the middle. This one, I'm going to do a double fold on. Now that you can see, I spread it out and made it a little wider because <clears throat> I need the space. Let it cool off. And there you go. And you just fold it over. And there you go. Some people can do like this. You can actually do like that as well. All of that is in the ironing. Let's see how that looks. Let's do that one. That should stay put. Let's put that over there for later. <clears throat> See how that's going to come out. All right, now we're done with our ironing. Now here's where we're going to need our seam ripper. And we're going to need our bow tie clips. We're going to need um, some scissors. And tape. I use strapping tape. It's like, again, waterproof. It doesn't tear, wear and tear, and I'm going to use it in the support for the middle, and I'll show you that in a little while. And then we're going to use a needle and thread. So to finish the second half, we're going to need bow tie clips, a seam ripper, some scissors, needle and thread, and some strapping tape, or something you're going to use to bind the middle. All right. Now, now, we already formed it, already told you it's going to go right here. So this is the bow tie clip that we're going to use. We're going to use this one. Basic bow tie clip. This is a large. They have smalls. 
This is a small, like for children, bow ties. You can see the difference. <coughs> Uh-oh. See the difference in the width of the ties for children. This may be up to five, and this is like five and up. All right, now we're gonna take this for measurement. <clears throat> Center it. Use your seam ripper. You're not gonna cut all the way through all the layers. We're just cutting through the first layer. Be careful it doesn't slip and cut your fingers. Cutting through the first layer about an inch across. <clears throat> you don't wanna open it up too much because when you fold the bow tie, it's gonna show. So you just want it neat enough, open enough to get the clip in comfortably. Again, the next space is right here. Same thing, just under the first layer and it opens up really nice. Okay, there, and then on here, we've already closed this off. I did a little bit of cut there, but it didn't come all the way through, and when I put the clip in, you're not gonna see the clip, even though they're not gonna see this part, it's still good they don't see it. So, then we're gonna go ahead and take these two and slide them on in there. All right. Position it like you want it. <clears throat> Try to center it best you can. All right, and as I was saying before, it doesn't come through. <clears throat> you don't see it. It's in here. You just cut through the first layer. It's even under there and that makes it nice and neat. Now, this is the part I use a tape for, and I measure it for the width, the thickness that I like it. I had some pre-cut strips, see? This is a little less than an inch, maybe three, four, seven inch in width. And like I said, we've already did most of the shaping Right now, we're gonna go back to that. Again, position it like you want it. See the bow tie clip? I'm holding everything in place, and this is what this is for. I use this in the middle, and then I go. Hold it exactly where I want it, and secure it in place with the tape. Again, some people use string. I've seen people take string and just string around here like this. Um, and then uh, there's another way where you could sew the inside. That's in another video. But that's your bow tie. Isn't it pretty? <clears throat> All right, let's do the other one. Same process. I'm going to do it again. And again, center it. Be careful, I've slipped and cut my hand over here several times, so be careful sticking it in there. Don't push too hard. You shouldn't have to. Any of your iron and glue in it should not have stuck the pieces together. Right here, we're gonna do it again. Again, about an inch, a little less than an inch. And we're in. Not on the other side. Remember, we didn't bind these sides. All right, that's about center to me. And let's get them in here. Okay, again, they didn't go through. As you can see with these not bound, this is where it is, right <clears throat> behind the interfacing. All right, let's get another piece of tape, our strapping tape. I pre-cut my video tape already. <clears throat> and we're going to smush. Here we go. Not this one. Go pretty around. Straighten this out. Once you put the binding tape on, it's basically the bow tie. So if you need to make any changes or adjustment, you try your best to do it as you're making the tie. Close you get to the end, 
the less options that you have to make any changes and then you'll have to go over the whole process again all right that's not going to make a difference for now I see that little extra look at that and we didn't bind it and it's in there no excess pieces out on the side that little bitty something we'll get that later and I see a string nice neat professional bow tie clip on there we go all right now <clears throat> the next and final step is sewing on the middle pieces we already ironed them did our prep work on that I know how to enough to make it go all the way around and complete a full revolution let's see this is approximately three and a half inches yeah so you need about a little over three and a half inches even three and a half again excess you can cut off I'd rather have more than less because then you just have to cut you another piece this one's a little bit longer so let's see let's go ahead and get this off of here now I got two kind of strings and uh, this one is uh, for quilting but it's invisible thread because sometimes I don't like to keep changing a thread and this is just a brown polyester thread you want something sturdy enough where it's not going to break um, or fall apart again we make the ties for durability they've lasted long 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 times I've seen people with my ties for years and years to come all right so now we're going to thread this one is already threaded a little bit it's enough should be enough to make one all right so let's get this one done <clears throat> take the piece it's a little bit fat see on there always pull it in cut it so you can make your adjustments it doesn't need to be that big watch I turned the iron off so I'm not don't even have to re-iron just adjust it a little bit more bring it over to your specifications here we go like that okay and bring this over hold on these extra pieces let's do it again <clears throat> I usually try to catch the edge of it here and then put the majority of it up here so if I have too too much I could cut it off there and then I'm fold here This one, like I said, it's too much for me. So I tuck both sides. There you go. And then I have my invisible thread. Matches any material. I don't have to change the color or worry about it. It's durable. It's for quilting. You can't see it. I can barely see it. And you do like slip knots all the way across as close to the edge as neat as possible, of course. This um, actually moves. And I like to have it in the center back when I'm done and of course we're continuing this all the way across Uh 
Oh, I heard that pop. Mm, pull too hard. Let's see if we can finish this off without having to change the thread. much to the edges as possible tighten that off and then you cut it there you go now like I said you can move this this one I mean, got it so snug <clears throat> there you go Moved it a little further to the back. And you have any excess stringer like that, I usually take a lighter and just light it and it melts all around there. There you go, and that's a completed bow tie. Little bread opens up. They put it on the neck like this. Clips onto the neck on here and here. There you go, and you put it back. And that's the bow tie. <clears throat> now let's go ahead and complete our second one. The same process. I'm going to use this thread. Um, I got a little bit. Maybe I might have enough. And see how this one, that's pretty. See how we did that? And again, you take the most of it on one end, you're tucking. And we're folding and we're tucking and we're folding and we're tucking and we're folding and we're positioning all right and we get that in place where we want it <clears throat> and we sew slip knot you get closest to the edge as you can uh-oh Okay, did I lose that? All right, I still have it. And let's see, no, it's gone. All right, let's go ahead and thread that again. It takes a very steady hand. All right, you guys don't need to watch this. It'll get painful. All right. I'm blind, I can't thread a needle. <clears throat> That's crazy. All right, let's try this one. Isn't that crazy? I get the one, the invisible one I could see better than the one I can actually see. So let's get that threaded, <clears throat> tie a knot in the edges. All right, let's get back to finishing this. Oh, 
cut any loose edges. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and fold this back up. And this one needs like a little bit more leeway. It looks like I would like a little bit more room to play with. That's why you make the extra material. But it works. Repeat the same process. Get close to the edge as possible for neatness. I'm staying in this corner getting a couple of loops for strength and then I'll start looping it and moving across. You don't want this to come apart, so you don't want to rush it. <clears throat> the smaller the stitches, the less bulky it is, and the closer you get to the edge, the less little pieces, again, edges are your enemy. I don't want nothing sticking out, because it may look good right there, and then a couple of days later you see your bow tie, and it looks like it's falling apart, and you like all that work. So you have to take care and time in it in the process. All right, we got through with that. Again, we can, I usually use a lighter or something, and uh, cut the edges around on the excess string. The lighter flash doesn't look good on the camera, so I'm not gonna do it here. Now you go with your finished product. There we go. Yeah, we've got two completed bow ties and the handkerchiefs I cut with pinking shears. Oops, set for time. And this is what it looks like if you do not cut it. If you just leave it like this, it'll start fraying. It won't stay like this, so don't leave it like this. Either do pinking shears or use your seam. Um, serger and serge the edges and all right and that's it let me just added two more bow ties to our collection thank you for watching again there will be other videos that'll show you how to prep pick material how to cut the material and how to make different style bow ties but they will all be clip-on types okay thank you again for watching my name is Maisha goodbye